Our scripture lesson is from the second chapter of the book of Habakkuk. Hear these words. I will stand at my watch post. I will station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what God will say to me and what God will answer concerning my complaint. Then God answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. May God bless the hearing of these ancient words. Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite you to pray with me that the word today would respond to what we've already experienced and to what we are yet to experience in this worship service. So please pray with me. Oh God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our presence together virtually around the world. And we thank you that you are connecting us this day and thank you for your spirit that continues to open us and illuminate our minds and our hearts, calling us into that direct response to be your disciples in this world, in this day. So God, now through this word, I pray that you would help us to understand more about you and more about our relationship with one another. And so now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, here at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ, we have been taking opportunity to really evaluate who we are as a church, who we are as God's people. And that's not just those of us who are in the physical presence of the church building, but who we are in the world, how we minister in the world, what we believe, how we make that true and manifest it. And we are preaching this series of sermons called More Than Words, because we want to ensure that what we say is not only what we believe, but it's also how we work and have our being in the world. That was really Jesus' concern as he ventured his ministry here more than 2,000 years ago. He wanted to help those early disciples to understand not only what they believe, but also how how they had their being, how they became disciples of Jesus. And we in Cathedral of Hope talk about being a disciple of Jesus, being a follower of Jesus, being an imitator of Jesus, and acknowledging that this Christ that we believe in is a Christ that transcended the resurrection through the the experience of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit and now lives with us, contained within our bodies. Paul would say that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And as those who are called to have our being in Christ, uh, those who are called to follow in the ways of Jesus, those who Jesus would say, you would do even greater things than I, We embody that sense of purpose and mission and vision. And more than words helps us to look at what it is that we believe, who we are as a church, who we are as a global community, and how we can make a difference in the world today. No matter where we are, no matter what our circumstance is in, we believe that faith will move us. And so we have shared this vision, this mission statement of proclaiming Christ through faith, hope, and love. And last Sunday, uh, I preached about our, our new vision mission statement about that proclaiming Christ through faith, hope, and love, through all that we do, through all that we are, through all of our actions, through all of our being. And if you haven't yet listen to that sermon, I want to encourage you to go back and to listen to it because I hope that proclaiming Christ through faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love, I I pray that we might be able to manifest that in our everyday experience. For that is the mission of Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. We're not just about reclaiming Christianity, not reclaiming something that has been in some ways toxic or uh, has polluted uh, the ways in which we understand Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, but about proclaiming this new understanding, this understanding that Jesus came to give those disciples thousands of years ago, to make that real in our lives, to be those disciples of Jesus, and to give ourselves permission to give ourselves permission to become a believer in Jesus. 
Our vision for this congregation is a vision that we are taking with us all the way through to 2025. We're calling it Vision 2025 because we as a congregation believe that God has much, much more work for us to do, that God is helping us to make real on the promises of Jesus, that Jesus will be with us even until the end of the days, the end of the ages. And that presence of Jesus is not just the physical presence that was present more than thousands of years ago, but is a spiritual presence that's with us today. And that the message of Jesus Christ, one of God's unconditional love, God's revolutionary love, God's redeeming love, God's, God's saving love, that that sense of love comes to us through those faith and hope actions that we get to manifest in the world. The greatest of these is love. I pray that wherever you are in the world, no matter what you may hear from this message today, I pray that you will hear that love is unconditional, that God loves you just the way that you are. And that whilst God loves us just the way that we are, if we are open to the experience of God's divine grace, God's divine love working through us, that God is also then in the business of transforming who we are from what the world might want us to be to what God intends for our lives. And, and I pray that that is our mission, that's our vision together, that not only do we proclaim Christ with our words, but we proclaim Christ in our actions through faith, hope, and love, through the ways in which we move and have our being in this world. Our vision as a congregation is to move and to expand our territory so that not only you and I will know that love, but generations to come and those who have perhaps given up on God, those who have perhaps been hurt by the church, those who have been damaged by what I call toxic theology, a toxic theology that has somehow taken over the church. Instead of preaching love, preaches hate. Instead of preaching acceptance, preaches judgment and exclusion. That we might be able to turn the tide, not only on our own relationship with God, but on the relationship that we invite others to have with God. As a congregation, we have a vision 2025 to make real on the promises of God, to make real on what Jesus preached, to make real on what those early disciples encountered following Jesus's life and death and resurrection, that we would make real on what it means to help people find their own personal relationship with God. You see, that's really what it's about. It's about having a personal relationship with God, not a, not a relationship that's built on, on somebody else's experience, not even a relationship that's built on the dogmas and the doctrines of Christianity, but to have a relationship with God that is dynamic, that is experiential. And here at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ, one of the things that we want to do in the work that we do together is to help connect the unconnected to help connect those who have perhaps abandoned this sense of faith because of the way in which they have been treated by Christianity or by the church or by religion in general, to find ways in which we might be able to encourage one another to give God a second chance. I, I believe that God gives us many chances. If I look back in my own life, there are many reasons why I could believe that God would not want me or, or God would abandon me or God would might even give up on me. But thankfully, I believe in God's grace. I believe in God's overwhelming divine experience of love that gets placed within me so that I then might be able to make that real in the world more than words, to connect the unconnected, to connect those who need a sense of purpose and hope in their own lives. And I believe that that hope and purpose comes from God. I believe that that hope and purpose comes in the vision, the vision for my life, the vision for your life, and the vision that we might transform this world from where we see it today. Let's be honest, the world is in a bit of a mess. And the faith that we have, this faith, hope, and love that we have in Jesus, this faith, hope, and love that we experience through Christ's presence in our lives is something that we want to be able to give away and something that we want to be able to share. It is that sense of hope that the world is looking for and you and I as we gather in this place today, perhaps curious about this church, perhaps curious about Christianity, perhaps even just giving God a second opportunity to be real in our lives, that we come to connect the unconnected and to bring them into a place that they might feel safe enough, whole enough, hope-filled enough 
to know that this God that we speak of, this God that we preach of, this God that we act out of is good enough for every single one of us. And when we connect the unconnected, whether that's through our small groups, whether that's through an experience of worship, just like we're experiencing right now together in this place, but when we connect the unconnected, when we f- build a framework and a, and a home and a, an environment where people can begin to understand this God of faith, hope, and love, when we do that, we then begin the p- process of becoming all that God wants us to be. And through that, then we become acts of goodness and grace in the world. We become disciples of Jesus. That's what Jesus called his early followers. You are my disciples. And we come as the people of God, not just to worship, not just to experience music and prayer, not just to hear a word, but to allow that word to penetrate our hearts and our minds, our bodies, to transform us, to change us, and to call us out into the world to be those disciples of Jesus. And as part of that discipling process is then to disciple others so that others might also find that deep connection that we have with this God that is divine, this God that is not just above us, not just below us, but this God that is within us, this God that is real, this God that transforms us. Our mission, our vision is just to live what we believe, to know that this is more than just words. And by connecting the unconnected or even reconnecting those that have been disconnected, we allow one another to find that faith, hope, and love that the Apostle Paul would challenge that early church at Corinth to find, that faith, hope, and love that comes when we are maturing in our faith, when we're maturing in our experience of the divine, of God's self within us. And the greatest of these is love. Paul would remind us that when all things pass away, when everything is stripped away from us, there are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. That's the gift I want to offer you today, this gift of love. And because of that love, we can trust God. And because of that love, we can be connected to that great source that we call the divine, that we call God. And because of that love, we can rest and abide in knowing that this God that we believe in has the best intent for us. We connect the unconnected so that we might become disciples of Jesus, not just so that we can enjoy worship, but that we might become disciples of Jesus and to move into the world, to transform the world, to change the world, to bring hope to the world, to bring an element of faith to the world and ultimately to love on the world. My predecessor in this congregation, Reverend Mike Piazza, would say this so often in this church, I want you to fall in love with Jesus one more time. Friends, today I echo that same sentiment. I want you, I invite you, I implore you that regardless of what perhaps you may have heard in the past, I want you to fall in love with Jesus one more time because when you fall in love with Jesus, you also fall in love with yourself. And when you fall in love with yourself, you can fall in love with the world one more time through faith, hope, and love. Find a connection this day. Perhaps it's through this worship experience. Perhaps it's by sending me an email at senior pastor at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ so I can connect you. Perhaps it's by simply just sitting for a moment, opening your arms and say, okay, God, okay, come, be a part of my life. And then through that experience to open yourself more fully to what God intends for you and for me that God only wants the very best for us. Connecting the unconnected so that in that connection together, we might do life together. We might be disciples of Jesus and help others to find connecting to this one that we call God, this one that we see in Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit continually to be transformed. Paul would say we are being transformed daily in the twinkling of an eye. It's not just a one-off experience. It's not just one and done. It's an experience that we live into as those disciples of Jesus. Vision 2025, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, is about connecting the unconnected 
whether we do that in person or whether we do that through our digital ministry to help folks rediscover or discover for the very first time that this God that we believe in is not just words, but is lived out in the actions of our lives. May it be so this day, as we cast our vision, as we live into our mission of proclaiming Christ through faith, hope, and love. God bless you. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen.
Friends, here at Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, we are connecting the unconnected. And maybe you were unconnected at one point, and today you made a decision to find your place at the table. So thank you for joining us in worship. I want to invite you to make uh, this your spiritual home, and by doing so, remain connected with us. And for those of us who are part of this community already, I invite you to make your gift now to Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ so that we might continue this mission and this vision of helping people find their place at the table. You make a difference. Thank you so much for being with us today. And so with that, we pray a blessing. And this blessing remains with us throughout this week, that under God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God, known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and for always. God bless you, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen. Amen.